<clears throat> okay, guys, I'll just do a quick video of, of just before I go over the reverse lunges. So, again, beginners, you don't you can, you can ignore the weights, you don't need to use the weights. All, by all means, if you want to use some kettlebells, if you find this exercise easy or you're familiar with it, then by all means, okay. But so the idea is you start the step, so we'll have everyone, we'll maybe space out a wee bit more. You start the step, and you're just going to step off, okay. But the idea is that because you're elevated, that knee has to go further before it actually hits the ground, so you've increased the range of movement for this leg, okay. So that's what you're doing, nice and controlled, nice and smooth. You're trying to keep your foot flat on the floor, okay. So try to resist the urge at the moment. Or, well, when I say resist the urge, if it's if it's not intentional, then that's what we're we'll, looking we'll to intentionally keep your heel on the ground. Um, so just be aware of that, okay? Nice and smooth and controlled. If you want to do it with weights, you can either take one or two. Again, it's kind of up to the person to work out, see how it feels. If you think this is not bad, you just start to uh, implement a bit of resistance to it. The, the orange kettlebells are 12. The yellows are 16, uh, and you can take, you can double up. Obviously, and suddenly you're getting a really heavy one leg, one leg, one legged exercise, particularly through this deeper range. Okay, if you've got a wee issue with knees or something like that, and deep range movements aggravate you or aggravate the knee area, you don't need to do it. So if it hurts, just don't just reduce the range. Okay, so don't feel you need to do everything as it's prescribed in the class if you know that something's going to cause a wee issue. So you could, if you want, let us know at the time, or you could just reduce the range. If it still hurts, let's suppose you just go to there and you're still thinking, this is sore. Don't work through pain, okay? That's one of the first pieces of advice I would give is do not work through pain. It's not, I understand enthusiasm and desire to make progress might, it tends to make people want to do that, but it, it doesn't end well ever, right? So take it from me, who said, Far too many injuries. Um, so what you could even do is what's called an isometric, where you just actually hold the position, which is an excellent training tool. So what if you want, if you think, I can get to here, and it's it's not, you might think, I can get to here, and no further, but holding it here isn't that challenging because it's not a big range. So at that point, you could load this up. So you could take a kettlebell or two and just hold this position. Okay, just hold it, and maybe, because you're not going up and down, obviously you're not counting your repetitions, so maybe just try to count 25, 30 seconds in your head, and then just swap sides, okay? So the idea here <coughs> is that while, you'll we'll, we'll just be sort of sharing a, a platform and a bar with someone, while you're doing one exercise, they're doing another, and you just sort of communicate straightforward with each other. Because they're both unilateral exercises, the lunge is a one-legged exercise, the landmine here, is a one-armed exercise. That's a one leg. That's a one arm. Um, you should you should finish them at roughly the same time anyway. We're going to aim for about ten repetitions. Probably because you're with beginners, I never like to give them too much in the first instance because right, end up we walking about with doms for about a week, right? So anywhere from between eight and twelve reps. We, I prefer to give ballpark figures at the start, um, and you can do the same with this. So if you get to like. As a general rule of thumb with the landmine press, when you're pressing the bar out, if you get to 12 reps and you think, I could do 15, 16 reps here, as a general rule, it means it's too light. Okay, so when it comes to strength training, one of the key elements of getting stronger is intensity, and intensity relates to the weight you're lifting relative to your current strength levels. So if you're doing 15, 16 reps, it means that it's not heavy enough for you to create enough stimulus that will then create muscle breakdown and then lead to an adaption. And that adaption is increased strength. And that's one of the key elements of what's called progressive overload. Um, so that's entirely an individual thing. That's the beauty of strength training. And that's why a beginner can get the same sort of progress as someone who's been training for a while. Because if you follow the same principles of progressive overload, you should all be work, everyone should be working just as hard as each other. Um, so as a general rule, you want to be working at an intensity of between 5 and 12 reps for an exercise for strength training. So what that means is, as I've just said, if you can do, if you think you get to 12 and you can do 13, 14, 15, you're able to think about your dinner and all that, <laughs> it means that the, the weight isn't heavy enough for you to create an adaption basically. And therefore all you need to do is the next time add a little bit of weight to the bar. Um, so there's like two and a half, five, tens, etc. at each bar. So there's weights at every bar. Uh, of any sort of 
are now unique, essentially. Okay, so obviously as a beginner, it'll take you a few weeks to get your head around it and like recognise what the weights are, but that's what we're here for. You can ask us or you can ask one of your fellow members because there's plenty of them and they're all really friendly <laughs> and helpful. So that's that wee section there. And uh, okay, so I'll leave I'll leave this video for cut out. <clears throat>